Fairy Fandom from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia, www.wikipedia.org. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the GNU free documentation license, available at www.gnu.org slash copyleft slash fdl.html. Fairy fandom is a subculture built around the fairy genre. S since before the turn of the 20th century, the fairy genre has been made up of such things as animal characters and children's fantasy, funny animals and cartoons and comic strips, and allegorical animal literature. The fandom for this genre was first organised by fans at science fiction and comics conventions in the early 1980s. The fandom then grew into a large and diverse community of animal-related fantasy fans. Members of the fairy fandom, known as fairy fans or simply fairies, particularly enjoy media that includes animals with humanised or anthropomorphic features, such as exhibiting human intelligence and facial expressions, the ability to speak, walk on two legs, and wear clothing. Such animal characteristics are referred to as anthropomorphic. They frequently appear in popular animated cartoons, comic books, and novels. Since the mid-1980s, Fairy fans have referred to any anthropomorphic animal character as a fairy. Other terms for these types of characters are funny animal and talking animal, or kimono in Japan. The fairy fandom has grown rapidly with the advent of the internet. Content created by fairy fans on the World Wide Web covers a wide range of interests, including fantasy, philosophy, sex, politics, religion and lifestyle. Section 1. History and Inspiration the term fairy originally came into existence as a science fiction convention in the late 1970s. Then, the term was used to describe one specific genre of fantasy art. As these fairy fans became more organised, they began using email and mugs to communicate. Notably, one of the oldest and largest mugs in existence is Fairy Mug. Examples of the types of animal characters with humanised features that typically inspire fairy fans are represented by the titles below. From cartoons, Roger Rabbit, The Angry Beavers, Rocco's Modern Life, Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, Wile E. Coyote. From animated feature films, Disney's Robin Hood, My Neighbor Totoro, The Secret of NIMH, Bargy, Madagascar. From TV, Father of the Pride, Kimball the White Lion, Disney's Rescue Rangers. From comics, Usagi Yojimbo, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Omaha the Cat Dancer, Chandler Panda, Albedo, Mouse. From novels, Richard Adams' Watership Down, Andre Norton's Bree to Come, Brian Jacques' Red Wall series, Stephen Boyette's The Architect of Sleep, S. Andrew Swan's Morio series. From games, RuneQuest, EverQuest, The Star Fox series, Sonic the Hedgehog series, Jazz Drac Rabbit series, Conquers Bad Fair Day. From webcomics, Newshound, Boom Express, The Suburban Jungle, Kevin and Kel, Faux Pass, Narmia Dieter, Sabrina Online, DMFA. Such titles are often credited with inspiration by those who create works with the, within the fairy fandom. Many members of the fandom have also cited as inspiration the historical usage of anthropomorphic animals in world mythology, including, but not limited to, Greek, Egyptian, Japanese, and Native American. Although many of the non-fairy creators of such material are aware that some of their audience consists of fairy fans, the most common term used by cartoonists to describe anthropomorphic animals is funny animal, regardless of whether the animals are used in a funny way or not. Additionally, in Japan there is a genre called kimono, a tangentially related but independent genre with different cultural associations. There are dozens of webcomics based on animal characters. Many are created by fairy fans and as such are referred to as fairy comics. Kevin and Kel, by contrast, was created by a non-fairy illustrator and cartoonist, Bill Holbrook. Though there is little, if any, actual difference between a fairy comic and a traditional funny animal comic. Section 2. Fan Creations Fairy fans are eager for more material than is available from mainstream publishers. Their demand is filled by fellow fans, amateurs to professional artists, writers and publishers who produce drawings, paintings, stories, independent comic books, fanzines, websites and even small press books. 
Fans with craft skills put together their own plush fairy toys, sometimes referred to as plushies, or build elaborate costumes called fursuits and wear them for fun or to participate in convention masquerades, dances, or fundraising charity events as entertainers. While many fursuits look like sports mascots, some fursuits go beyond that and include moving jaw mechanisms, animatronics, prosthetic makeup, or other frills. Section 2.1 Art and Writing Many fairy fans participate in the arts, becoming amateur and sometimes professional illustrators, comic strip authors, painters, sculptors, writers, musicians, and craft artists. Primarily, the fandom produces visual artworks, although there are many three-dimensional sculptures, fabric pieces, stories, filk music pieces, and even photographs. While a bulk of these fan-created pieces of art are distributed through unprofessional mediums such as personal websites and via email, some publish their works on anthologies, amateur press associations, or APA zines. A few have mainstream professional credits to their names. Section 2.2 Role-playing characters Fursonas Some fairy fans on the web create anthropomorphic animal characters in order to engage in role-playing sessions on the many fairy-themed muds on the internet. The oldest fairy role-playing environment is Fairy Muck, although predating it was the GE-run BBS, the Beastie Board, in which conversation sometimes led to role-play. Another popular online fairy social game is called Fircadia, created by Dragon's Eye Productions, which has become significantly more popular than Fairy Muck. There are also several fairy-themed areas and co communities in the massively multiplayer online role-playing game Second Life. Section 3. Conventions Sufficient membership and interest has allowed for the creation of many annual fairy conventions held in North America and Europe, the largest being Anthocon in Pittsburgh each June or July. Further confusion held in San Jose each January is almost as large. The total number of people attending fairy conventions exceeded 9,130 in 2005, a growth of 13% over the previous year. In 2005, 18 such conventions took place around the world. The first known fairy convention, Conference, is no longer held. Cali Fair has replaced it since both conventions are based in Southern California. Many conventions feature an auction or fundraising event with the proceeds often going to an animal-related charity. For example, Further Confusion has raised more than $44,000 for various charitable beneficiaries over its seven-year history, and Anthocon has raised more than $56,000 for animal-related charities since 1997. Section 4. Sex and Fairy Fandom A number of fairy fans who have adult age enjoy creating erotic works. In fairy slang these may be referenced to as yif or spooge, slang for semen. Online galleries of such works tend to be clearly labelled with adult content warnings and are not intended to be viewed by minors. As happens with most other fandoms on the net, fairy fans of appropriate age may engage in cybersex fantasies on mucks, mushes, muds and other online roleplay environments. Such environments frequently have age-restricted areas for this kind of activity, although some mud-style fairy games are restricted in their entire entirety to adults only, such as Tapestry's Muck. It is rare for the fairy fandom to catch the attention of the mainstream media. On those rare occasions when it has happened, the news and entertainment media have focused almost exclusively on aspects of fairy sexuality, portraying fairy fandom as a fetish-based subculture. Examples include articles and columns in Vanity Fair and Loaded magazines, the syndicated sex column Savage Love, and dramatised fiction or documentaries portrayed on television shows like ER, CSI Crime Scene Investigation, CSI Episode 406, Fear and Loathing, The Drew Carey Show, and MTV's Sex 2K. Some articles link the fairy fandom to sexual fetishes such as bestiality and plushophilia but many fairy fans state they do not participate in or approve of such fetishes, and they protest the portrayal of the fandom as anything but an interest in a certain style of fantasy art. They do not think of fairy fandom as being any different from any of other fandoms such as Anim, which also have erotic subgenres and sexually oriented roleplay, but are not judged as a whole because of them. Because of this controversy, Many fairy fans have advocated limiting the visibility of erotic fairy works. This has caused even greater protests from the creators of such works who consider such restrictions to be a violation of their freedom of expression. Today, however, all fairy conventions have established guidelines and standards of conduct which restrict sexually explicit material and behaviour to appropriate areas and situations. Others have created fairy art archives such as YIRF, which are free of sexual content. Though the sexual controversy tends to capture the greatest amount of attention, fairy entertainment of a non-sexual nature that is 
suitable for all audiences, continues to be produced in great abundance by the fandom. Section 5. Fairy Lifestyler The phrase Fairy Lifestyler is used to describe a subset of the fairy fandom that takes a deeper interest in relationships to animals and animal characteristics than others in the fandom. This interest may show itself in physical and spiritual manners. Section 5.1 Characteristics Fairy Lifestylers differ from fairy fans in the level of their relationship to animal natures. While more mainstream fairy fans are interested in artwork, stories, and other such activities, lifestylers incorporate their interest in animals into their personas or beliefs. Some may incorporate perceived animal natures such as gait, voice, personality, or instincts into their activities, while others express beliefs in totems and animal spirits. They may also believe that animal instincts exist within humans as part of a genetic code, reincarnation from previous animal life, or other spiritual reflections. Some lifestylers may also take on physical attributes of an animal, such as adopting animal-related hairstyles, tattooing, wearing articles of clothing or jewellery. There are cases of people undergoing extensive body modifications as well, as shown on the Discovery Channel program Human Animals Wild Makeovers. Section 5.2 Origins The phrases Fairy Lifestyle and Fairy Lifestyler first appeared in July 1996 on the news group alt.fan.fairy during an ongoing dispute within that community. One element within fairy fandom believed that any peripheral interests not directly relating to fairy arts did not belong under the fairy umbrella, whereas others believed that the definition of what, what constituted fairy was up to the individual. The news group alt.lifestyle.fairy was created in August 1996 to accommodate discussion not relating solely to artwork. Posters to this news group quickly attracted the term fairy lifestylers. Some related communities, such as the Wear or Therian community, share similar beliefs with the fairy lifestylers, but wishes to distance themselves from the fairy fandom. A common perception of the fairy lifestyle is that a very high proportion of its members are gay or bisexual, especially the latter. However, some people dispute this, opining that fairies are, as a rule, more likely than the general population to accept non-heterosexual orientations and that this, rather than any real difference in numbers, accounts for the perception. Estimates as to the actual proportion of gay and bi fairs therefore ranges widely, but reliable statistics are absent since serious research into the subject is almost non-existent.